Shalom, my Hebrews and Hebrews. Welcome back. We are cruising with Jesus. I got nothing better to do than to drive through this obstacle course, learning these new wells, and talking about our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, it'll be kind of a quick video, maybe, uh, but either way, holiness, being holy, sanctified, redeemed, and righteous, but mainly sanctified and holy because of the redemption of Yeshua. Let's turn the camera around. You don't need a big close-up of my mind. You know? We must understand holiness. We've got to get that down. If we don't understand holiness, we're never going to be able to allow righteousness or sanctification even enter into our lives. You know, and sanctification next to holiness is extremely important, and we're not preaching that from the pulpits today. We're not teaching and we're not preaching holiness, holy. Holy is, is set apart, cut out of, removed from, set apart, designed for a specific purpose. What is that? Cut out of, removed from, what is that? That's that's my life, my desires, uh, my lifestyle being cut out and removed from this dark and wicked world. For what specific purpose? The specific purpose to glorify God and further the kingdom. Meaning that although I am cut out, removed and set apart from this world, that specific purpose requires me, by the sanctification that Christ Messiah did when he drank from the cup and went to the cross for us. He sanctified me. Kodeshified, Kodesh, which is holy, he, by his wonderful works, cut me out and set me apart. He redeemed me and allows me to walk in righteousness with the Father. In that, in that walking with righteousness requires repentance. Repentance requires that we understand sin. What is sin? 1 John 3, 4. Sin is transgression of the law. What is righteousness? Luke 6, 1, 6. Walking blamelessly in the ways of Yahweh. What ways? His law, His statutes, His commands. You know, really, I know I kind of just blasted through that, but, but take time to set that out. And look at it, and it's a process that until it gets to repentance, we, the individual, the human, the Israelite, we don't have any uh, any say whatsoever in it. I don't have no say in my holiness. I don't have no say in my sanctification. I don't have no say really in my righteousness until I get to repentance. And then if I don't repent, then there I am. I'm in trouble. All of that goes away. Or does it? I, I have to keep going back to because this is one that I don't struggle with as far as what I understand. What I struggle with is making others understand it. That Judas, Kiroth, Iscariot, Judas from Iscariot, was wicked at the heart. And when when Yeshua was at Pesach with them, with all his disciples, and he said, He who touches this bread with me shall deceive me. It's the same that shall deceive me. He was giving Judas one more chance to say, Hey, you know what? I repent. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me. Judas wasn't having nothing to do with it yet. You know, and I still, I wrestle with looking at the scriptures and what Judas did after 
uh, betraying Christ, or going back to the the money, the, the scribes or the Pharisees, and throwing the money back on the temple floor and giving it back. I still struggle with what the scriptures say there and what Judas's motive truly was. So if we looked at Judas prior to selling Jesus out, we looked at we look at a sanctification and a holiness along with righteousness that we just would automatically assume Judas is going to be right there with Jesus. And we make the same false assessment, the same false judgment, not only with ourselves, but with our peers and those around us. You know? Oh, he's got it going on. That dude knows the scriptures. That dude walks it. You know, he he's doing it. Is he really? I mean, is he really? Are you really? And that's where I have to peer into my life daily. This morning, I spent about 45 minutes praying to the Father. Forgive me, Lord. I continue to walk in my own lusts. I continue to walk in my own desires. Regardless of whether they're sin or not, I'm doing my will, not the Father's will. And that's where I sent, I spent this morning repenting over because it just hit me. It's like, I'm still doing Matt. I'm still doing me. Why? And that's something you need to look into. Each and every one of you. Look into your own lives. Because it, when, when Yeshua was praying, He said, Father, take this cup from me. Let there be another way that this cup would pass from me. But not my will, not my desire, but your will, Lord. Jesus, knowing full well, there's another way out of this. But for the will of the Father, we're going to walk through it. When you see the fire and the trials in your life, do you look at them and go, there's got to be a loophole and a way around them. There's got to be something. I can do, so I don't have to go through this fire. Or do you just take a gut check, man up. Lord, whatever has to be done here, I'm ready. Hang on, give me just one second, y'all. But be ready to walk through that fire. And that's only going to come after you have walked in those steps. Holiness and in sanctification, righteousness. This is the touch of gray gas meter. Right. And the tanks aren't ours, I take it? No, none of that's ours. Okay. Right. No, that damn country area, it sits right on them tanks. And it's a little dinky well. Let's go find it. All right. <laughs> anyway, okay. My apologies for, for that, but um, we got to walk in that holiness. What do I do in my in my daily life that's, that the Lord has already cut me out and separated me from this world? But what does my life, if you were someone outside looking at me, what would you see? Would you look at me and go, this dude, does he doesn't line up with none of these other churches and pastors that I look at. But he is different. He's different in the world. He operates different in the world. I see him uh, do things that are way more harsh than these other churches in these instances. But in certain instances, I see him be way more forgiven than these other ones. What's the deal? Well, you're going to have to go look at the scriptures so you can see why I'm operating the way I operate. Now, do I always operate the way the scriptures tell me to? Absolutely not. I screw up quite regularly. Uh, but... That's where the sanctification comes in. Jesus has sanctified me, kodeshified me. He has set me apart. And in that, I walk in righteousness. That righteousness, walking blameless. Because I look at the law of Moses. 
I look at the law or the law given to Moses. I look at Yahweh's decrees and commands. And I say, These, this is my guideline. This is my measuring stick of how my life's going to go. We're not going to do this no more. We are going to do this. When I get to this point, we're going to veer off because that is getting very close to crossing Yahweh's law. And allowing the Torah, the law of Yahweh, to not be uh, my slaveholder, my bondage, but my guidance. What guides me? See this right here? There's a fence right there. And there's a fence right there. Here's my road. If I'm walking in Torah by being holy, set apart, cut out for that specific purpose, sanctified by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's putting me in righteousness. I'm traveling this road in righteousness. I'm walking blamelessly in the commands and the ways of Yahweh. I'm, wa I'm, I'm driving without issue. I'm not getting stuck. I'm not uh, all jacked up. But whenever I walk like that, and I walk in repentance. See, repentance is oh, getting kind of close to the fence. Come back over here. Hey, you know what? Getting kind of close to the fence. Let's repent. All right? <clears throat> we're walking correctly in those ways, in the way of Yahweh, by the full power of His grace, that fence is not there to, to enslave me. That fence is not there to stop me, control me, but to lead me, guide me, and direct me towards, back towards unto the Father. Does that make sense? See, if you don't understand all that, that fence um, is a bondage, a slaveholder. Hey, I can't go. I, there's, there's good things on the other side of that fence. I want over there. That fence is your slaveholder. And it has you in bondage. We're not under the law. No, you're under the law a whole lot more than you realize, son. You know, every time you claim Jesus nailed that to the cross, we don't have to do that no more. You get further and further into bondage by the law. If you've been with me and you're, you're one of my, my regular followers, I know I haven't went too fast. I, I know that they just boom, boom, boom. And they already know this. If you are a new subscriber, and you're listening to this, and you're hearing some truths that you ain't never heard before. Go back. Look at some of my other videos and archives. A lot of my videos from two years ago and a year ago, uh, I was just learning to lead my family. Just my family. Not, a, not, not the, the church assembly that I have now, but just my family. I was learning to lead them into holiness and righteousness, coming out of the world, yet going right back into the world for God's purpose, under His commission. And so by doing that, I, I explain things a whole lot more simpler. Um, so go check them out. Uh, if you have any questions, I can hit them up down there in the comment section. I love answering questions about scripture. Most of the time, I'm, I look at your question and go, I'll have to get back with you on that one. I don't have a direct answer at the moment. But I don't answer biblical questions with Matt's opinion or John's opinion or Billy Bob's or Baptist Church opinion. No, I, I answer questions uh, with the scripture. We will go look it up. And what does God say about it? Because I really don't care what Matt says about it or the Baptists or the Catholics or even those who, who claim to be in the way. Uh, Hebrew, Messianic, uh, Israelites. I don't care what they say. Now, if they're pointing towards Scripture, yes, absolutely. But most of the time we're not pointing towards Scripture. Most of the time we're pointing towards Matt's opinion. So we can twist you and make you do what I want you to do. I've already been to this lease. I know full well I've been here. Only time 
time it makes water uh, load it. Yeah. That is it. I don't even I don't run the line here except in the winter. And I just call the TV on it. <coughs> it's on the page. Oh, yeah. well, I do. Because some days it might make five MCS. Some days I just. Well, if you have any problems, I. Uh, Most times it's little increments, all they mix it up with points. Yeah. I'll come back off page, off page, in case. I didn't take the first page. Yeah. Well, I. Can, yeah, I'll call you. Okay. I can fix anything on my iPad. Well, I didn't know you had that. Hadn't been a 40. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can do it. Oh, they won't let that happen. Well, I would. When Dylan was here, him and Rob made me an administrator on it. Because I was trying to cross behind everybody. And then when Dylan got fired and the 40 got bumped up, they took me off. Like, okay, then they put me back on. So, I had one of those things that went back to the administration. Well, they put me back to the administration. Um, I'd like to have you there for the office. I'm thinking about it. I wouldn't. I don't want to do it. I hated that period. So, you can go back to the administration. Hell. I never changed anything. Past Saturday, but I didn't tell you. No. I had to do some state there. Past Saturday, I know all the week. You just put me in. It's all the way to the restaurant. No. I don't know what to do. 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 And we these went down. This is going to make me leave it, make me leave it. I should have eaten it. I got to go up and unload it. This one too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I should have eaten it. Oh, there. Damn, expect to come, or expect to go to the box? Yeah, it's fine. He called. Going to back on, so I did. Oh, okay, back on. He's all, yeah, we missed out on that five, six MCF every day. He said 20. And I was like, don't make 20. And I said, they ain't barrel of bulls. I didn't know that. I never looked at bull. I said, yeah. And I thought, y'all look for big ones. I sell a load every uh, year and a half, maybe. That's what people don't look for. Unload Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you probably started paying attention to that. That did Yeah, that. I yeah. see something like that. But like when I first took over all the wheels, I asked them, do you get any money for gas? I don't want to play some Or do you want gas? We always want to I buy gas. Over there on the east side of London, except for the east wing, I don't think that's no one. I'm going to fall down every day. I'm going to fall in a barrel every three or four days. I let one bug jump up there and make 30 barrels a day to make a barrel a week. I don't know what you're doing over there, but just keep doing it. If you can't go on, I let it in about a bunch of people. Just keep it. Pace it. Shut it. The bug can go up about eight barrels a day. It will be zero. Blow it four days and just keep going. That's what it's going to be worse. Hey, somebody got spirit of money. Yeah. I suspect it. Yeah. It's a pilot already told me. I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. Yeah. It's fine. It's going to be a big hole for you. Yeah. And Danny, I kept telling him, I had that one piece of the piece of the boat that's going to be good. It's going to be a pressure. Don't make it. 
Now there's another one. <coughs> Now I like to work. <laughs> okay, I'll have to. I'll have to try to figure out how to edit this video. I had 25 minutes. Let me write that down. 25 minutes. I think I figured out how to do that. All right. So, sanctified, codeshified, because you're holy, because he is holy, and he's redeemed you back unto you himself, and he's called you to go forth and tell others how simple it is. Why have we complicated it? Why? Oh, that's right. That old devil, not the devil, the devil. The one that you are. Being trained up all your life of this is the do's and the don'ts of religion and this is how you're to operate if you're religious and all this bullshit lies. Which is taking you through the fence that we were looking at a while ago that was the guidelines that Yahweh set out. We done ran through the fence. We're done out in the sand dunes. Balls deep stuck up to the axles. And it's snowing all around us. And there ain't nothing we can do about it. Because we refuse to look back at our tracks, turn around and go back the way we came, get reset, and move forward the way Yahweh tells us to. Why do we do that? I'm not preaching at any one individual. Uh, if anything, I'm preaching to myself. I'm speaking to myself. Sometimes you just got to turn around and go back to the exit you came from before you can go forward. Otherwise, you're on the, the loop around the city all day long and you ain't doing nothing but running out of gas. <coughs> so, holy fied, holy, sanctified, righteous, repentance, and start the cycle all over again. And you do that day in, day out. You know, at least, you know, when I first started pastoring, when I first started really publicly speaking on these truths, I'd gotten to a point where I told my wife, I said, if one more person tells me Matthew 7, 1, judge not lest ye be judged. I'm going to lose my mind. And so I had to preach on judge not lest ye be judged. Which means condemn not lest ye be judged by the same ramifications that you just judged, you just condemned upon. That's Matthew 7, 1. Get the... Beam out of your eye so you can help your brother get the speck out of his. That's this process I just talked about of being holy, sanctified, righteous, and in repentance. Get that plank out of your eye and you can help your brother get the speck out of his. Now you're two. Now you're moving forward. Now there's two of you to go forth and get another speck out of another brother's eye. Judge not lest ye be judged. It's not walk around with your head in the damn sand saying nothing. If I see you in sin, I'm going to say something about it. Because I expect the same in return. And those who don't, who will not call me out on on me walking in, in unrighteousness or walking in the way that is fixing to cause me to sin or has already caused me to sin and you don't have enough guts or fortitude to say, hey, bro, you're doing it wrong. Look at your scriptures. You want to do that for me? I got no use for you. You're a gutless coward. Because that's how I, I look at myself. If I look at, at someone's life now. If they don't want no part of Yeshua... I'm not going to go look at them and, and 
help them sanctify anything. I'll preach the word of truth, and the Holy Spirit has to do that. I'm not going to go and say, oh, yeah, you're homosexual, you're a wife beater, you're drunk, you're, you're a drug head, you don't spend your money. I'm not going to go do that. It will do no good. What I will do is preach truth. And that's what you have to do. Well, I'm not a pastor. Oh, but you are. You are. I believe it's in Second Peter that we are priests of our homes. That we derive from a priestly kingdom through Yeshua. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. This is Oldfield Disciple. I will catch you on the next